All For Us was originally written just for a record on my album. And then once Sam caught wind of it, he was just like, I hear it, Lab, I'm in. At first, I was a bit like, nah, Hollywood, you know, everybody loves to say that. Yeah, we're going to use your track for the finale of a massive HBO show to see my personal music and the music that I was creating for myself become a musical piece in a HBO series is ticking a lot of boxes. This is definitely a dream come true. I'm taking it all for us. What I love about All For Us is that it's a rounding up of Rue's dream. And her dream is to be clean, to be the better version of herself. All For Us is that song that's like, I can do it, I know I can do it. Zendaya being as talented as she is, I was like, hell yeah, this girl could kill this record. The song is the idea that you're a dreamer and you believe that your dream is for, for everyone around you. It's actually a bit of that Drake, started from the bottom, now we're here, everyone's coming up. And it's that mentality of just triumph with your people. But there's also a, a catch where every dreamer has a certain element of selfishness. When I started this track, I was sitting in the studio with my managers having a meeting while they were talking about marketing and all that random shit. I was like, oh, I just want to make a beat. So I just went off and started working on All For Us. I kind of had a trap rhythmic swing in my head. I don't love using trap sounds all the time, but what if I could use like a live drum kit and still keep that trap bounce? They're still doing this meeting, and I, I don't know, I just heard a few words like, yeah, and the video's gonna look like this, and then my mind just blanked out, and I was like, okay, now I'm putting on the bass. It was just like this one, one finger bass note just rolling out. I'm originally from Jamaica, and every bass line, they say you have to rub up the bass line. When you play a bass line, you gotta rub it up. You gotta make sure it, it swings your head. I started thinking of this choir. I just started kind of going, oh, oh, da 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 I was trying to sound like different people because a choir sounds best when there's different voices. I wanted it to feel like it was in like a cathedral or a church. One thing that really inspires me is like, uh, uh, what is it called? Oompa Loompa. That song, yeah, from, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, literally, every time I'm working on a record, I'm trying to sound like these guys. From there, I was like, I need something that carries the high register of the record. And so I was like, why don't I sample myself? I sampled it on an MPC and just used it as a trigger. So I just put it on a pad. I'm using three elements and all of those three elements are already showing people what the rhythm or the swing of the record is. From there, um, it was just kind of adding extra mini elements and just stuff that helps develop the record. It's just like, what are the things that say that this record is you? I love like Super Nintendo glitch stuff. A little Mega Man has just ran through the middle of my track, just like shooting little uh, pistols. I didn't want to overdo it um, because I can really overdo it with 8-bit. You just keep thinking that the track's not done so you add more sounds and then it just sounds like a mess. The hats kind of turn up a little later so I wanted them to kind of um, just help elevate the record. It was just to add some room um, because a lot of the sounds were pretty produced and programmed. It was just the bass the drums and the, the, um, the chipmunks. So I just wanted to have some another element sitting over that. It's a, a clavinet, which is 
something that Stevie Wonder's used on many, many records, but I used it just as something just to help layer the record and, and just keep the rhythm rolling. I really love production that has elements of industrial sound. So I just kind of added this just to um, develop on the pre. I put some guitar in there, which I sat well far in the back. This was kind of inspired um, from like Kill Bill and a lot of those soundtracks. What I was really happy about is that even though I wasn't there, Zendaya was able to interpret every vibe and everything that I was doing. She could take on anything and figure out a way of, of expressing it in a way that, that works for the record. Mama making ends meet, making ends meet. Working like a slave, Mississippi, yeah, yeah. Daddy ain't at home, no. Father, father. Gotta be a man. She came in the studio, she heard the record, she really loved it, and she was like, I'm not gonna do what he does, I'm gonna do what I do. And I was like, that's the perfect way to approach a record. I remember speaking to you, uh, the Euphoria team, and they were like, Lab, you need to finish the record if we're gonna use it for the finale. And I was like, shit, I need a middle eight. Like, and I watched another episode of Euphoria and I, I was like, okay, I think I know what Zendaya needs to say or uh, Rue needs to say to round up what this record's about. And so I started working on this middle eight. jazz bass, my B3 Hammond, and a Celeste. And then I wanted to put the Celeste sound through chorus and a few delays and stuff, just to make it sound a bit wonky and a bit kind of psychedelic. The original record um, for All For Us had my family singing the chorus and singing the choir parts. They're also musicians and they tour with loads of artists and they put me to shame as a musician. I got them all in the studio and I was like, I would love to hear all these voices together. I wanted a choir rap. No one's really made a choir rap. Even a choir saying bitch, like no one's ever made a choir say bitch. So I was like, I'm gonna get them to say bitch and I'm gonna get them to like do this kind of flow that like maybe Kendrick would do. Sam comes to me and he says, Lab, I've got this crazy idea. I think I can make your genius a little bit more genius. I want to add an even bigger choir on the record and I also want to add a marching band. We're just going to get everyone in a room and just go ham. This crazy HBO choir just decided they were going to come and they just heard my version and they were just like, they just wrapped that shit up quickly. And that was like the moment I really noticed that the record was becoming even bigger than it, it itself. <laughs> The final bit that we worked on was just um, getting the marching band in. So this is basically just the whole track as one piece. There's loads of little bits that um, I couldn't even get into, but um, I think that's what's great about a score is that you can introduce somebody to this motif or this energy. Um, and, and introduce them to almost the theme song of each character. I didn't know that my music could even translate to a world like that. So I'm um, definitely proud to like have my music involved in something like this. I'm pretty excited about everyone getting to see this extravaganza. Yeah, let's hear it.
I remember talking to one of my friends and he was like, it's kind of like you're downloading all of this information from the sky. So I kind of seem like I'm just talking to myself and I'll be like, da, 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 da. yeah, that sounds all right. Yeah, okay, cool. Bass. And I look like an absolute psycho, but somehow that seems to make sense once I put it all into this machine. 